Today we are taking a look at more messed up animals that have been created by science. From human horses to human cows. Let's talk about these experiments and more only in today's video. Starting off this countdown we have the wall fin. Take a guess at what two animals were bred for this one. If you guessed a whale and a dolphin, you're correct. A wall fin is a mix between an Atlantic bottlenose dolphin and a false killer whale. The first recorded wolfin was born in 1981 in Tokyo SeaWorld, but sadly he only lived to around 6 months. Probably a prime example of why they shouldn't exist in the first place. Another wolfin was later born at a sea life park in Hawaii in 1985, but she had trouble reproducing and all her babies sadly passed away. In our ninth spot today we have the horse human. And this one is going to ruin your day completely. In 2001, a man was caught trying to inject human sperm into a horse. He had done this to about six horses until he was caught by police and arrested. Thankfully, none of the horses got pregnant. But ew, imagine if they did. Woo. In our 8th spot we have the Iron Age Pig. Now take a look at this porker, he is a chunky guy. The Iron Age Pig is a cross between a domestic pig and a wild boar. Now something about that cross just does not sit right with me. Now people like breeding these pigs because they can get a lot of meat out of them or just sell them for a lot. But they are considered very hostile animals. This is due to the fact that wild boars are typically more aggressive. And that's a dominant trait that gets passed along to their offspring. Moving on to number 7 we have the the infertile pink bullworm. The pink bullworms are invasive pests that lay eggs on cotton balls. And then once they hatch, the larvae eat the seeds and damage the cotton fibers. In 2005, the situation became so bad that scientists were like, okay, we gotta figure out a solution here. So they decided to create sterile pink bullworms. They did this by treating a bunch of moths with radiation. The radiation would damage their reproductive cells, but it wouldn't kill them. That way, when they encountered a normal pink bullworm and the two mated, bam, it would create an infertile pink bullworm. So for four years, two billion pink bullworm moths that were treated with radiation were released into Arizona's cotton fields. They literally would fly an airplane above the fields and just drop millions of these moths down onto the crops. And it worked. It helps with the bullworm problem. But imagine if their plan didn't work. That could have gone really bad and damaged entire cotton fields. Coming in at number 6 we have the sheep with human livers. In 2007, scientists at the University of Nevada, Reno managed to grow human livers inside of a sheep. They did this by injecting human stem cells from bone marrow into sheep fetuses. Now they chose sheep as their test subjects because their circulatory system is very similar to ours. In the end, they managed to create livers made with 20% human cells. They are hopeful that one day this can be used to help grow human organs for those in need of a transplant inside these animals. But anything done with animals is highly controversial, especially when it has to do with injecting them with human DNA and stuff. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with the cows. I swear, no animal! is safe out there, okay? Not even cows. In 2008, British researchers were given the okay to conduct some human animal experiments. As part of the experiment, they decided to manipulate cow eggs. So they took the nucleus of the cow egg, which has the source of the most DNA, and they replaced it with the nucleus of a human cell to create a growing embryo. They then watched the egg develop and multiply. Scientists could then extract the stem cells from this. They hope that one day they can use the stem cells in disease treatments. Moving on to number 4 we have the Jeep. And I'm not talking about the car Jeep, we're talking G-E-E-P, okay? A mixture between a goat and a sheep. Now these animals are adorably cute, but sadly breeding the two can be a very risky game. Very few babies are actually carried to term, and even few manage to survive birth. Those that do often have a bunch of genetic abnormalities. But people still cross them together, which is just sad, because you're breeding animals destined for failure, and for what reason? Moving on at number 3 we have the Jaglion. Can you guys guess what this animal is a mix between? It's kind of obvious. It's a mix between a jaguar and a lion. But these animals are actually naturally born, which is wild. Like I just can't imagine a jaguar and a lion 
getting it on. So it first started when a lion and a jaguar coexisted in the same zoo together. They were raised together and well, one thing led to another, bada bing bada boom, mama lion became prego. I shared this love story in another video, but it's so cute, but also sad, but I just wanna share it again. So there once was a jaguar named Diablo and a lion named Lola. The two were raised side by side and they were inseparable. When Lola got mature though, they kept Diablo away from her so that they wouldn't mate. But whenever they were apart, both animals got depressed. It got so bad to the point where Lola wouldn't even eat. So they brought them back together and they were happy and eating and thriving again. You can't keep true love apart. And obviously one thing did lead to another and they did end up mating and they had two Jaglian babies together and they all lived happily ever after. Coming in at number two, we have the goat human. I can't with this one. Okay, I just can't. But this image right here is said to be a picture of a human goat baby. Story goes that in 2016 in Alabama, of all places, a goat gave birth to an odd looking baby. In fact, its kid looked very human-like. So it's said that this goat was actually the product of a human getting it on with the goat. I know, I know, it's disgusting. It's disgusting. I threw up in my mouth a little when I read that. But again, this is just a rumor. And in our number one spot today, we have the hybrid lions. Now, this is actually a very sad example of crossbreeding gone wrong. In 2006, nearly two dozen crossbred lions in northern India were dying after they developed a mysterious disease. The disease was a result of inbreeding and a weakened gene pool. Basically, they didn't know this, but they kept breeding lions that all had this weakened gene, and nearly 80 lions were affected by this. The lions being born had weak hind legs and had difficulty walking, and they couldn't run at all. They also had failing immune systems and they weren't living too long. But the worst part was that they let these animals suffer. There's a wildlife law in India which prohibits the killing of animals. So basically, they had to just wait for these lions to die a slow, painful death on their own. It's a very tragic case of breeding gone wrong. All right guys, that's all for today's video. Let me know in the comments below which one of these mixes you found the creepiest. Okay, stop getting it on with, with animals, it's disgusting. Now, speaking of comments, let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from the video, top 10 bizarre creatures found in the Bermuda Triangle. Rhea Hedder Shetty commented, imagine what else would be under the Bermuda Triangle. I'm surprised that creatures actually live in such strong currents of water. I mean, yeah, they just probably like pass through. I don't actually mean like they're living right there. <laughs> I don't know. Yo, fish live all over the place, but uh, yeah, maybe they're eating the ships. <laughs> Just kidding. The self finest commented, it's the unknown I worry about. So yeah, the Bermuda sea creature frightens me. Imagine an animal swallowing a cruise ship. Yeah, I used to be the same way, worrying about the unknown, especially space. I'm like, bro, asteroids, bam, killing us. Don't like it. Anyway, there's a new fear for your list. And Jamie A. Ramirez commented, you are the best, I love your videos, keep up the great work. And they got really passionate about that because it was in all caps with multiple exclamation marks. So thank you so much, Jamie. I appreciate that. Love ya. All right, guys, that's all the comments I've shown out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll show you when I show you. Bye. Starting off this countdown, we have the Wolfin. Wolfin. Wolfin? Walrus, Wolfin, okay. Probably a prime example of why they sh 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 And that's a dominant trait. And that's a dominant trait that gets, pa oh, I can't speak today. So they decided to create sterile, sterile. The two were raised side by side and they were un, in, iris, they were inseparable. Thank you. <laughs> they were raised side by side and they were ins, inseparable. <laughs>